a victim is someone, you know, who's had something done to them against their will. It's disgusting. These people that are, are capturing and acquiring young individuals for sex work or sex trafficking, uh, they view these, these individuals as just an object. They are not an individual with emotions or feelings. It's horrible reality for millions of people. A lot of individuals don't believe this is a problem in, in Manhattan and in our nation, just like they don't believe sexual assault is a problem in our nation. They don't believe that domestic violence happens, or if they do believe it happens, they believe it's a personal matter. They have been victimized, they really have. But I tell you, you don't want them to stay there. You don't want them to consider themselves a victim. Um, they explained to me that I was being groomed up for prostitution by this guy who was 50 years old, and I had no clue. But they told me they told me all the signs, and and it finally made sense what was really going on. And so I was completely scared. I wanted to change my whole identity, um, not tell anybody who I was. Um, I grew up in foster care. I have been in foster care since I was 12 years old and I um, got kicked out of my house when my dad went to rehab because um, my stepmom didn't want to take care of me so I went into foster care when I was 12. But then I started becoming really rebellious and I got kicked out of like five homes um, because I just wanted someone to show me that they truly loved me and that they weren't gonna just get rid of me. I just kept being rebellious and then the day I turned 18, I um, started doing drugs. I started doing meth. So I wanted to get away from that because I was tired of being around drugs. It's hard, I think, because when you're dealing with youth, first off, and, and they are at that moment where they're trying to define who they are, and I think that at moments, at, at any point in his life, they are making decisions um, that is maybe contrary to what an adult or a parent would say because I think they're trying to identify who they want to be. Uh, usually there is a broken homes or abusive homes. Uh, almost all of our ladies have been sexually abused as children and so you know that just that just sets them in a whole nother category all of a sudden of being vulnerable and um, it's, it's almost like they're a magnet for that kind of abuse uh, as they're growing up. There needs to be an awareness for anybody when talking to any individual of, you know, who are they talking to, what is their interest, and uh, to making sure that they're very cautious in leaving with any individual. So I met this 50-year-old man who um, said that he would take care of me and he um, invited me into his house. He said he would take me away from drugs and um, within two days I started doing drugs around him. He brought drugs around me and then um, I lived with him for six months and got really strung out and he um, weaned his way into dating me and um, so I was in a relationship with him and he just, I don't know how, but he took complete control over my life and completely changed who I was. Like, he, I don't know how he did it, but I, I did everything I, that he wanted me to do. He manipulated me. But then we were out of money and he wanted me to move to the city where I, where no one was allowed to know where I lived. And then he started to threaten to kill me. And if I tried to leave him, he threatened to kill me. There initially are uh, approached and they're befriended. Uh, they identify these these youth that are potential runaways or are runaways. So they befriend them, they give them um, gifts, items of desire that maybe people of their same age group are getting. And over time, they, uh, they gain trust from a very bad person and then expand even further to say, why don't you just travel with me to another city or another state? And at some point they cut ties from their, their past and they travel with this unknown or what they believe known person and that's when things rapidly change. Also, trafficking is set up in a way that it's so coercive that sometimes victims believe that they are in love with the individual who is keeping them captive 
through whatever means. Um, that's difficult. If you feel like you are in love with the the pimp or the one who is controlling you and keeping you in that situation and forcing you to sell your body, um, then you have to somehow get through or in between that relationship in order to try to get them services and reach them. Um, the boyfriend ruse is used a lot. Um, and just so it's a lot of psychological manipulation um, to eventually get them in where they don't even realize that they were tricked and they're a victim of human trafficking just because of all the psychological manipulation. And we're trying to, to try to get a feel of what's going on with this person's situation and through that gives us indicators that we might need to dig deeper or detain a person longer to try to find out if we've got a crime that's taking place, has taken place, or is about to take place. So I reached out to a church, um, got in contact with this program called Exodus Cry in Kansas City. I just made like little steps to um, try and free myself from the fear of this person. And um, it was really hard. I struggled with a lot of PTSD from what happened. I would go on runs and God would, like God told me to go running in the morning by myself. and. Um, I was really scared to do it, but it showed me that this person was not after me. And so we're trying to find a program that was like not in the Kansas City area. And that's when they found the Homestead program. And um, after two months of living in Kansas City, after I got away from this guy, I moved into the Homestead in Manhattan, Kansas. Ashley was 18, I believe, when we first had her come. And she's a Kansas City girl. She came and she was here just a few hours and determined she was way beyond what we had set up here. She was just, uh, she didn't need it. Uh, as the course of time went on, I think it became more and more apparent to her that yes, she did need the support network. I mean, she had been in a number of foster homes, um, just not a lot of stability, you know, in the family of origin at all. and. It was really hard for her to stay in any one place for very long. So I think it's been a real testimony to Ashley's growth here. Uh, she's 20 now. The last two years where she's been able to stay put, stay in her job, and continue to push through hard things. So it's, it's, been, it's been great with Ashley. It really has. She has grown and matured so much. I'm so proud of her. Then it wasn't like I was running from my problems anymore, but I was just like taking the next step in my life. And so when I joined the Homestead program, um, they came around me and um, put tools around me like Bible study every week, and um, they gave me a job apprenticeship and um, put the, the security that I needed to have like a loving support. The homestead has been the first place I've been that's unconditionally loved me. And um, that has like, I mean, I'm not perfect and I'm, I'm not anywhere close to perfect. And every time I've made a mistake or done something, they've come around to me and loved me through it instead of pushing me away. And, and um, just realizing that there's more, that there's hope out there. You, even though you think that you're at the lowest part that you could possibly be, um, being a 20-year-old with a 50-year-old strung out on drugs, to I am now working um, in a professional environment, and I guarantee you no one in this office could see me doing that or see me coming from where I've been. You know, I, I believe Ashley has a big, big heart for women in particular who are hurting, who are the underdogs, I could truly see Ashley at some point in time uh, being in some sort of ministry that would, you know, she'd be able to use what she's been through. She would be able to use what's happened to her to really uh, connect with other women and to help them move forward in positive ways. I think empathy is a big thing. It's really easy to be sympathetic and be, you know, oh, that's horrible, and then walk off. Um, but if you empathize with what they're going through, you can't just shrug it off. Yeah, I don't, I don't like the victim card. I don't think that people should live in that state of mind at all. Um, 
what happened in the past is the past and you've overcome that and I think that it's important to look at yourself as a survivor, not a victim. It does clear up and that they, just as you say, can be a survivor through that if they can extend that hand to the people that are out there wanting to extend the hand out to them to provide the assistance that is needed for them. You know, I do believe that the homestead is a great place for ladies to come. It is a sense of family. It is holistic, like I said before. We help them realize who they really are. Uh, not, they're not what has happened to them. They are beautiful, respected, valued people uh, with a great future ahead of them. My name is Ashley and I am a survivor.